Today we're going to talk about an artist named Paul Klee. Paul Klee was an abstract artist. He was known for painting using lines, shapes, and colors. His artwork is called abstract because it didn't look like the real thing. If he painted a tree, it didn't look exactly like a tree. It might be a little bit blurry. It might be made of shapes. So come on in and let's... Paul Klee was born near Bern, Switzerland in 1879. He grew up in a very musical family. His mother was a singer and his father was a music teacher. They taught play t Paul to play the violin when he was very young. Eventually, Paul decided to study art at a school in Germany. He loved color. Most of his paintings and other works of art are filled with beautiful and exciting colors. Sometimes you can recognize certain things in Paul Clay's paintings, such as people, animals, and houses. He also used numbers and letters of the alphabet as symbols that had special meaning to him. Paul Clay's art is known as abstract art. The objects and figures in abstract art look different from the way they look in real life. Sometimes the objects in an abstract painting don't look like anything at all. Many of Paul Clay's greatest paintings are just colors and shapes. Paul thought that a painting didn't have to look like a photograph to be a good painting. He wanted his paintings to show worlds that had never been seen before. Paul Clay was always experimenting with the surfaces he painted on. Sometimes he painted on rough cloth with one kind of paint and colored over it with another kind. Near the end of Paul Clay's life, his colors became a little darker and the titles of his works became more serious. But he still painted with filled with fantasy and magic. All right, Braves, now that we've talked about Paul Clay and we've looked at his artwork, um, Head of Man, we're going to kind of draw uh, our own Head of Man and use lots of um, different shapes. And of course, we're going to be using um, some straight lines. So you're going to get a piece of paper. Make sure you write your name and your class code on the back. So that class code is the grade that you're in. So if we're in first grade, Howell, you'd put H-O-W. So once you have your class code, I'm gonna flip my paper over. And I'm using a black oil pastel. You can use a black crayon. You're going to get, um, everybody's gonna get one paper plate. I'm gonna put my paper plate and I kind of wanna put it so there's enough space on the bottom for maybe a neck and shoulders. And I'm going to hold it with one hand and I'm tracing with the other, trying my best. And if you get a little bit of oil pastel or crayon on a paper plate, it is okay. All right, now I am finally finished with the head. I'm going to draw a line down the middle of the circle or the middle of the face. Then I'm going to add um, a neck and some shoulders, and you could put a collar for the line of the shirt. Um, that's called a collar. Then I'm gonna draw a horizontal line. So that's a line that goes right across, side to side, um, kind of near where the mouth would be. And above, I'm gonna put some eyes. So think kind of like um, an ellipse or like a football. And these eyes, mine are gonna touch Yours could be different if you want them to make a little pupil. And now on the corner of the lines, I'm gonna draw two lines, kind of like a box. And then down here, I'm gonna do the same thing, a straight line down to the side. So almost like two boxes. Um, that is actually going to be the nose. So if you want to, you could add a mouth somewhere down here. I think I'm going to wait and then I might add a mouth later. I'm going to add um, some shapes from the eyebrows and I'm using uh, a triangle kind of like Paul Clay did just to try a different eyebrow shape for fun. And then, oh, we already have the shirt. You could add different lines. And now here's where you can kind of go and you can add um, lines to make more shapes. So I might add a vertical line, so straight up and down line here. I might add a horizontal side to side here. You might even want to add a diagonal. It is totally up to you. However many lines that you add, um, those are the lines you're gonna have to color in. So 
I have a bunch here and it looks like I forgot my nose. So however many lines and shapes that you want to add, um, I might, there. Once you are finished and you have your head of man with all the lines in it, then you are going to use um, oil pastels. If you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons and you are going to color. Um, so you might want to think about colors on the color wheel. So the color wheel is a tool that artists use um, that shows all the different colors. Now I know there's other colors that aren't on here, but there are six main colors on the color wheel. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then violet or purple. Sometimes you might see um, a color wheel that has like a red orange or a yellow orange. This is just a basic one. So I think I'm going to try um, analogous colors. And those are colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. So red and orange are touching there beside each other. They're analogous colors. Orange and yellow are analogous. Yellow and green, blue and green, blue and purple, and purple and red are analogous, but you could color yours however you want. So I'm gonna start with blue. And I'm gonna fill in, ooh, I like this blue. I'm gonna fill in the entire shape with this blue. And make sure you're taking your time, trying to fill in all of the white spaces. The next color, since I'm using an analogous color, Blue is touching purple or green. So I think I might do green. Now that we're finished coloring in all of our shapes, we have a bunch of white space in the background. So let's use our oil pastels and fill the space in with patterns. Now that I have patterns filled in my background, we are going to paint. So your paint may look a little different. Yours may look like this. Maybe it's a little bit dirty. It may look like this, where it's in a palette. So this tray is called a palette. Yours might even look like this, where there's some cardboard. No matter what of these three that you get, they all work the same. So. I think I'm going to take my paint palette. They're watercolor paints. All of these paints that I've shown you work the same. So I'm going to try to choose one color and I'm looking for a color I haven't used very much of. So it looks like I've used quite a bit of blue. I've used quite a bit of green. Hmm. I could maybe do purple. Although when I do purple, if I use purple in my background, that's going to blend in and you won't see it. Um, I think I think I'm gonna do yellow. I know that some of my yellow uh, might not show up, but I'm gonna try that anyways. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, smooth it off. I'm not smacking it, I'm just smoothing the extra water so it goes back into the bucket. And then I'm going to swirl my brush onto the yellow. If you don't have enough water, you can see my brush is still pretty clean. That means I need to get a little bit more water and then swirl my paint on. And then, I'm gonna really gently paint my background. 
And since I used crayon or oil pastel, it should paint right over those patterns. It won't even mess them up or bother them. So I'm gonna keep painting. I'm not jamming my brush. Do you see me doing this, giving it a bad hair day? No way, Jose. I am using my brush like a ballerina. She is on her tiptoes. So I am painting my whole background, taking my time. You might get a little bit on the table or the desk. That's okay, we can always clean that up afterwards. If you are at home in your painting, you might want to get another piece of paper, put it underneath you, and that way, if you paint, you won't get it on your table. It'll go right on that, onto that other piece of paper to kind of protect your surface. And now that I'm completely finished, I'm going to um, wipe my brush in the water. So I'm gonna kind of swish it one alligator, two alligator, three alligator to get it clean and smooth it off. And now I am finished painting. I just have to put it somewhere safe and let it dry.